shenanigans in the Montgomery County, Pennsylvania, Courthouse Presents, an overview on alleged fraudulent guardianships. The court documents that you are about to see are real. The people are real. The stories are real. Guardianship is a legal tool that can be used to fraudulently take over a person's life and their assets. This overview will provide the shocking and disturbing answers to the questions that follow, including how do citizens get ensnared in the Montgomery County, Pennsylvania courthouse? How are doctors used in court proceedings to deem citizens incapacitated? In Montgomery County, Pennsylvania, do you have to be incapacitated in order to be assigned a professional fee-based guardian? Do guardians of the estate have to submit comprehensive financial reports to the courts to prove the ward's assets are being utilized appropriately? Is there any oversight in the amount court-appointed guardians charge to an incapacitated person's estate? Do court-appointed guardians always have the best interest of their wards? Can creating power of attorney documents save citizens from guardianship abuse in Montgomery County, Pennsylvania? And finally, can implementing a trust protect a person from being a financial victim of guardianship abuse? To answer the first question, citizens of Montgomery County are ensnared in the court system by many avenues. Some of the most popular are VA petitions submitted to the courts by Montgomery County's Aging and Adult Services. Sometimes, the assisted living facilities or nursing homes where the elderly reside will petition the courts and request a guardian of their choosing instead of a family member. This tactic can ensure that no one with authority will ever sue their institution. Sometimes a random attorney will petition the court who is a complete stranger to the alleged incapacitated person and a stranger to the alleged incapacitated person's family and friends. Thelma's story, which was previously published by Kangaroo Court, details a specific case of this instance. Unsuspecting concerned family members or friends sometimes will petition the courts for guardianship, unaware of the consequences to their loved one. Finally, predictably, financial institutions will begin to petition for guardianship of their wealthy clients or work with the Department of Aging and Adult Services to do so. This is a prediction for future abuses of guardianships. After all, who knows best who has assets to steal? In this example from the court records, Montgomery County's Aging and Adult Services petitioned the courts through their attorney, Robert Slutsky, to have Montgomery County citizen, Marietta, deemed incapacitated. The fee-based guardian, Kalpana Dushi, was recommended as a professional guardian by Robert Slutsky. Once Kalpana Dushi was the fee-based guardian of Marietta, on three separate occasions Kalpana Dushi used Robert Slutsky to write her petitions regarding Marietta. Did attorney Robert Slutsky have a deal with Kalpana Dushi? such that if Slutsky recommended Dushi as the fee-based guardian in his petition representing Montgomery County's Aging and Adult Services, then Dushi would use Slutsky as her attorney representing her company Adjustments Incorporated. Both Dushi and Slutsky were paid from Marietta's estate forcibly by orders written by Judge Stanley Ott. Does this arrangement seem like a blatant conflict of interest that a judge should recognize? In this second example of a Montgomery County citizen being trapped in the Montgomery County courts, Renee Ackerman, executive director of the landing at Willow Grove, requested that Robert Slutsky petition the courts to deem their resident, Nancy, incapacitated, for a couple reasons, Renee Ackerman gives as her first reason, Nancy would break back into the house. Note, the description of the house is more accurately stated as Nancy's house, specifically, Nancy's home of 50 years. The second reason that Renee Ackerman wants to deem Nancy incapacitated is because Nancy owes the landing at Willow Grove money. Although Renee Ackerman wants Nancy deemed incapacitated, Nancy is capable of correcting Renee Ackerman when Ackerman incorrectly stated that Nancy had paid their business office manager $250. Nancy corrected Ackerman by stating that she had only paid $50. Question number two addresses the use of doctors in court proceedings. The same doctors are appointed to evaluate Montgomery County citizens over and over again. 
Once the person is deemed incapacitated, the judge will force the incapacitated person, or the county, to pay the doctor for the evaluation. In this excerpt from court transcripts, Dr. Kenneth Carroll states, anything less than 30, on his mini mental status exam, is an indication of cognitive impairment. According to Wikipedia, normal cognitive skills are represented by scores of 24 and greater. 30 would be a perfect score for Dr. Kenneth Carroll to state that most people score 30 and anything below is an indication of impairment, allegedly opens the doors to deem almost anyone incapacitated. Even if a Montgomery County citizen scores well on the mini mental status test, they still can be deemed incapacitated. In this core transcript excerpt, Dr. Robert Perlstein, who is also routinely appointed to evaluate citizens of Montgomery County for their cognitive skills, states that it is unfortunate that a very intelligent person can beat the test. Although Elko beat the test, he remained under guardianship and was forced to pay court-appointed Montgomery County Attorney Diane Zabowski and court-appointed guardian Deborah Clock out of his estate as a result of court orders signed by Judge Stanley Ott. The third question addresses whether a person actually has to be incapacitated to be deemed incapacitated in the Montgomery County courts. As shown previously, in Nancy's case, Renee Ackerman wanted Nancy deemed incapacitated since Nancy owed the landing at Willow Grove money. In the court transcripts shown, Renee Ackerman testified that Nancy is fairly independent and drives a car. My question to you is, should people capable of living independently be deemed incapacitated? Previously, Renee Ackerman stated, Nancy lived independently. Next, Dr. Paul Moyer, in Judge Stan Leot's courtroom, testified that it was a strange to call Nancy an incapacitated person, but that Nancy may need a guardian anyway. Was Nancy in a courtroom situation where a racket of people conspired against her? Nancy isn't the only person who lives independently, but was assigned a court-appointed fee-based guardian. In Linda's case, Montgomery County's Aging and Adult Services submitted a petition to have Linda deemed incapacitated via their attorney, Robert Slutsky. Linda was forcibly moved from her home by her fee-based court-appointed guardian, Calipana Dushi. Linda was moved into an independent living facility. The money obtained through the sale of Linda's home was used in part to pay the service fees of the attorneys and guardians appointed by Judge Stan Liott. My question to you is, how incapacitated is a person if they can live independently and on their own? The fourth question concerns accountability of the court-appointed professional guardians concerning the finances of their wards. As seen previously, Linda was deemed incapacitated as a result of a petition submitted by Montgomery County's Aging and Adult Services. This court document shows the initial guardian's inventory submitted by Linda's court-appointed guardian, Kalpana Dushi. Kalpana Dushi lists that Linda's home is worth $217,000 but gives a subtotal of zero. Linda's court-appointed guardian, Kalpana Dushi, only lists approximate values from Linda's bank statements. Additionally, no copies of Linda's bank statements are included in the inventory submitted to the courts. If Linda possessed other material items, such as a television, car, computer, or jewelry, it is not listed under the inventory of Linda's personal property. Evidently, no accountability of an accurate assessment of Linda's assets are required in Montgomery County. Attorney Robert Slutsky referred to Cal Panadushi as a skilled financial professional in his original petition to the courts to recommend Dushi as Linda's fee-based guardian. Cal Panadushi doesn't even understand the rules of significant digits. Given Dushi's approximations in her inventory, Dushi's total should have been $224,000. Although Cal Panadushi stated her value of Linda's assets were an approximate, on her initial inventory submitted to the Montgomery County Courts, this approximate value turned into a concrete value in her subsequent filing. My question to you is, what kind of shenanigans are taking place in the Montgomery County Pennsylvania Courthouse? Although Cal Panadushi's financial report appears to be laced with inaccuracies, 
Kalpana Dushi certifies that the information found in her report is true and correct. Did Kalpana Dushi perjure herself in her financial report concerning Linda's assets? The fifth question concerns oversight of spending of awards estate. In this court document, attorney Lonnie Cades, who is the financial guardian of Anne's estate, petitioned the court requesting $3,400 for the purchase of a hearing aid from a custom hearing aid center. No exhibit for the price of the hearing aid was included in the records or any copy of a receipt. DLK, Managed Care Solutions, is routinely appointed as a fee-based guardian to citizens of Montgomery County. The president of the company is Deborah Clock. Attorney Lonnie Cades submitted an annual report to the courts. Payment to DLK Managed Care Solutions for $3,400 for the alleged hearing aid purchased was noted. There was no receipt or copy of a receipt in the annual report for the expensive hearing aid that happened to cost exactly $3,400. What are the chances the hearing aid cost exactly $3,400 instead of, for example, $3,354.11? No accountability of the spending of an alleged incapacitated person's estate appears to be required in Montgomery County, Pennsylvania. The sixth question concerns whether guardians always have the best interest of their wards. As seen previously, there was testimony that Nancy lived independently and drove her own car. However, Nancy was deemed incapacitated by Judge Stan Liott. Nancy wanted to get rid of her court appointed guardian. Kalpana Dushi. In Nancy's review hearing, Nancy testified that she was allowed back into her house once to get clothes, but she still does not have her winter coat. The hearing was in February. Evidently, Nancy's unwanted court appointed guardian, Kalpana Dushi, has not made any arrangements for an elderly woman to have a winter coat in Pennsylvania during the winter time. In another example of ill treatment of a ward of Montgomery County, Harvey's court documents show he was being chemically restrained on 5 milligrams a day of Haldol. This occurred while Deborah Clock of DLK Managed Care Solutions was his court-appointed fee-based guardian. The seventh question concerns whether power of attorney documents can save you from having a fee-based court-appointed guardian. In Murray's case, her husband preceded her in death. Murray's husband was a Montgomery County, Pennsylvania, a state attorney. Of all people, Murray's paperwork was in order. In fact, no child of Murray's denied that Marie gave her daughter, Kimberly, power of attorney. There was no reason to not uphold Murray's power of attorney paperwork. <laughs> Judge Stanley Ott routinely ignores citizens of Montgomery County's power of attorney paperwork, especially if they have assets. Judge Stanley Ott also chose to not uphold Murray's power of attorney documents. Instead, Judge Stanley Ott appointed a total stranger to be Murray's fee-based guardian, namely Deborah Clock of DLK Managed Care Solutions. Clock is a fee-based guardian who is appointed over and over again in the Montgomery County Courts. Murray, along with numerous other wards in Montgomery County, was forced to pay Deborah Clock thousands and thousands of dollars through court orders signed by Judge Stanley Ott. The last question concerns whether a trust will be upheld in the Montgomery County Courts. As seen in this court document, a trust will not stop alleged financial exploitation. Florence was a citizen of Montgomery County, Pennsylvania. Montgomery County's Aging and Adult Services petitioned the courts to have her deemed incapacitated through their attorney, Robert Slutsky. Robert Slutsky requested that a total stranger be Florence's guardian, even though Florence lived with her daughter and her grandson. The fee-based guardian subsequently petitioned the court to terminate Florence's trust, in which Florence's daughter was supposed to be trustee. Judge Lois Murphy of Montgomery County signed a decree terminating Florence's trust. According to the Pennsylvania Statute on Guardianship, the need for guardianship is supposed to be evaluated in light of the existence of powers of attorney and trusts. Should anyone feel protected by creating a trust or power of attorney document in Montgomery County, Pennsylvania?
Is there a criminal racket in the Montgomery County, Pennsylvania courthouse? Shenanigans in the Montgomery County, Pennsylvania courthouse is dedicated to exposing the alleged criminal racket that exploits the citizens of Montgomery County, Pennsylvania. The views in this presentation are the opinion of the narrator, which are protected by the First Amendment of the United States Constitution.